Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be going over an explanation, introduction to what we mean by electric current. What is electric current? Now, before I do that, don't forget, subscribe to my channel. Get all of my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can click on that little red icon in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen there. Subscribe to my channel, and also, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you're thinking about. Help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. Now, here is what we mean by electric current. Okay, here we have a simple circuit. We have a voltage supply, like a battery, for example. We have a switch. The switch is open, and we have a resistor here. This is a light bulb, for example. And because the switch is open, we have an open circuit, and the light bulb is not lit because there is no current. There's no continuous path. There's no current flowing through that circuit. If we close the switch, then we have a closed circuit, and the current can immediately start flowing through that circuit, and the light bulb will light up just like that. Open the switch, no current, no light bulb. Close the switch, and the light bulb turns on, and that is the result of that electric current flowing through that circuit. Now, what is electric current? Now, this is the definition, or this is a pretty good definition that we can use for current. Okay, current is simply the flow of charge. You'll notice it doesn't say it's the flow of negative charge, and it doesn't say it's the flow of positive charge, because really, it doesn't matter if we have the positive charges flowing one way and the negative charges flowing the other. You get the same result as long as it's the same amount of charge, okay? But all we really say is it's the flow of charge. Now, the symbol for current that we use in an equation is I as in V equals I times R, Ohm's law, the voltage is equal to I, the current, times R, the resistance. The unit for current is the ampere. Okay, sometimes people just say amps, but really it's the ampere, and it has the symbol A, the abbreviation for the ampere is A. And one ampere, a current is one ampere, is one, one coulomb of charge passes a point in that circuit every second. So one ampere is one coulomb per second. If you don't remember what a coulomb is, then you can look up in the upper right-hand corner of this video. There is a symbol up there, that little I. You can click there and link to a video where I explain what a coulomb is. Now, for example, when we write current, we can just say that I, the current, is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.25 milliamperes. Okay, so that's kind of the basics, the specifics for current. And now we're going to talk a little bit about why does the current actually flow. Now, this is supposed to be a diagram of a copper wire, for example, and we have the positively charged nuclei in that copper wire because the copper wire is made of atoms of copper, just by chance, and we have a positively charged nuclei where the protons and the neutrons are, and we have the negatively charged electrons, which are going around that positively charged nuclei. And copper is a good conductor because it has one valence shell electron. It's usually the outer shell electrons that will participate in the electric current. So I'm showing you those negatively charged valence shell, outer shell electrons. And I want to point out very carefully that when we have current in a wire, we know now, we didn't know 200 years ago when we started talking about current, but we know now that it's the electrons that are actually moving through that wire. The positive charges do not move. The electrons move. Now, how do we get the electrons to move? We have to supply some kind of force, some kind of push, some kind of pump. And what we really talk about that in, electric, in electricity, we talk about that as a potential difference, a difference in potential across that wire. And we can do that with a battery. The battery has a positive terminal and a negative terminal, and if we hook up that battery to that wire, then we'll have a positive voltage on one side, a negative voltage on the other, and we'll have a potential difference across that wire, and the electrons will be repelled by that positive charge because it's a like charge. They'll be attracted to that uh, they'll be repelled by that negative charge because that's a, a like charge. They'll be attracted to that positive charge because it's the opposite. And the electrons will move through that wire something like this. Okay, so you'll actually have a continuous flow of electrons in the counterclockwise direction through the wire, through the battery, and through that wire like that. 
the positive charges do not move. Okay, they're kind of set up in the structure of that metal. Okay, so that's how we get the current to actually flow through that wire by providing a potential difference across that wire. Now, let's talk a little bit more specifically about the electric current or current and the direction that the current is actually flowing. Okay, here's again a simple circuit. We have a, a voltage source, a switch, and a resistor, which is the light bulb. This voltage source has a long line on this side, which means it's the positive end of that. This is the short end, that means it's the negative terminal. And when we talk about the direction of current, we can really talk about it in two different ways. But we want to be really careful because when we do talk about it, we have to make sure which way we're talking about it. And one way we can talk about it is the electron flow because we know it's actually the electrons that are flowing. But the other way we talk about it is with the conventional current. Okay, The electrons we know are negatively charged. And that means that the electrons are going to be repelled by the negative terminal of this source and they're going to be attracted to the positive terminal of this source. And that means that the electrons are going to flow in that direction, in this case, in a counterclockwise direction. You could think if you put up negatively charged electron right here, it would be repelled by this negative. If we put an electron right here, it would be attracted by that positive. In that case, the electrons would flow in that counterclockwise direction. Or, in general, we can always say that the electrons flow from the negative to the positive terminal. Okay? Now, 200 years ago, when the conventions were being invented for the signs for charges negative and positive, when they came up with negative and positive, Ben Franklin did that, they had no idea that there was such a thing as an electron. So they assumed that the current was actually made up of the positive charges, or that it was actually positive charges that were flowing through that wire. So now, when you see in your book and in your textbook, when it says current, we assume that they're talking about, or we know that they're talking about the flow of the positive charges. Okay, even though that convention was, come, was discovered or invented, 200 years ago, and we now know that it's the electrons that are flowing, we still talk about current. And when we talk about current, we're talking about the flow of positive charges. So which way do the positive charges flow? Well, they're the opposite sign of the negative charges. So you can think they're going to be repelled by the positive terminal of this battery. They're going to be attracted to the negative terminal of this battery. So the conventional current is going to flow in the opposite direction of the electron current because they have opposite signs, okay? So the positive charges, the conventional current always flows from the positive to the negative terminal. So in your book, when it says, or on an assignment, when it says, which direction does the current flow? They won't often say which direction does the conventional current. They just say, what direction is the current flowing? That is meant to be the positive charges and the positive charges always flow from the positive to the negative terminal. Remember, current equals conventional current, and conventional current is the flow of positive charge. All right? Okay, now let's do a little bit of math and think about this a little bit quantitatively. This is maybe a little better quantitative definition of current. Current is the amount of charge that passes a point in a wire in a circuit per unit of time. And we can use this equation that I is the current is equal to the change in the charge or the amount of charge. Q is the symbol for charge in coulombs. And delta T is obviously the time in seconds. Remember, the time always has to be given in seconds when you put it into equation because oftentimes it will be given in minutes, but you have to convert to seconds. So for example, if you have 600 coulombs of charge, Passing a point in a wire in 500 seconds, that's about eight and a third minutes, then you're going to have a current of 1.2 coulombs per second. Remember, coulombs per second, as we said in the beginning, is an ampere, so then the current would be 1.2 amperes. All right, let's do another little simple uh, example here. Now, this one says a current of 2.5 amperes flows through a wire for 3.5 minutes. So you have that current that much time and we want to know 
um, how much charge passes a point in that circuit in those 3.5 minutes, and how many electrons would that be? So we're gonna solve A first. It says how much charge, delta Q is charge, delta Q is equal to the current divided by, excuse me, the current times the time. The current, it says, is 2.5 amperes. The time is 3.5 minutes, which I believe is 210 seconds. Three times six is, yeah, that's right. Okay, and that would give us that the charge would be 525 coulombs. That's how much charge would pass a point in that circuit in those 3.5 minutes. Well, how many electrons is that? Well, we have that many coulombs, 525. We know that one electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and therefore that is going to be that 3.28 times 10 to the 21 electrons will pass a point in that circuit in those 3.5 minutes when you have a current of 2.5 amperes, okay? So there you go, that's a quick introduction to electric current and then a little bit about conventional current and then a couple short examples of how we can calculate charge and current and electrons like that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I want to know what you think. Give me a thumbs up for this video, and don't forget sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.